Two apologies to start off the video. Firstly, apologies for the slightly random filming location. It is what it is. And secondly, um, the sun has decided to come out having not made an appearance for the entire month, just as I sit down to film. So apologies for the crazy lighting. But again, it is what it is. When it comes to nerves, there are so many different coping mechanisms, strategies, and everyone will kind of have their own way of doing it. So this is one of those videos where take what is useful to you and completely ignore what isn't. I say this just because a lot of the nerve management techniques or performance anxiety helpfulness that I've been given along the way has actually not worked for me and in some instances has actually made it worse. So these are all the things that I have developed over golly how long have I been performing? A very very long time, best not to think about it. So if you are like me and you have tried different techniques and you found that they aren't that helpful or like I say have actually made things worse then this is the video for you. My first tip is to just eat and drink completely normally, exactly as you would in your everyday life. A lot of the time you'll hear things like limit caffeine, eat a banana. Put down the bananas. They are superfluous to the situation. But for me, if I change what I'm doing from my normal day-to-day -day routine, it just makes me hyper aware that today is not a normal day and something weird is happening and it's all blah. It just makes everything worse. <laughs> so just stick to your regular routine. This also applies to exercise, actually. If you would normally get up in the morning and go to the gym or go for a walk or go for a run or do absolutely nothing at all, do exactly that. Again, I would argue that actually a bit of exercise is probably a good thing to be doing in the morning, but if you normally don't, then don't start your marathon training on the morning of whatever the thing is you're particularly worried about. In terms of actual physical things that you can do, there are millions of techniques that you can find online, but I actually have a super, super simple one that I have found the most helpful, and it's the one I always suggest to people when they ask me of something to do. And it's literally just clenching your hands as hard as you can into a fist and then stretching them back out again. Now I kind of like to do this sort of clenching it in and then almost like pushing away from my body. This is kind of twofold. On the one hand, it's quite a good way of warming up your hands. If you are an instrumentalist and you're about to play something, it's actually quite a good warm up. The other thing is that it builds all this sort of tension and then it lets it go. My hands are where I'm gonna feel it, annoyingly unhelpful considering what my job is. I also find it kind of helpful mentally. As you're kind of clenching in and then stretching out, it kind of feels like you're dispelling it out of your body. In some cases, I've actually walked along and then kind of throwing it away. And I've just found that really, really helpful mentally to be like, right, let's just get this out of my body. I may just be certifiably insane, which is, you know, not out of the realms of possibility. But I also like this because it's something that's kind of not too weird to be doing. If you <laughs> stood in the middle of a room in a massive power pose, then um, you might get a few looks and that could make the whole sort of feeling a little bit out of water a whole lot worse. Whereas if you're just sat there kind of doing this, like down by your sides or in your lap, then it's not a super weird thing to be doing. So therefore people, you know, if you're on a train or a coach or something, people aren't going to be like, what the heck's wrong with you? Wear something that you feel good in. Now a lot of the time when we're in situations that we're feeling nervous about, we probably have to be dressed a little bit smarter than our usual everyday attire. And the problem with this is that again, it can sort of heighten your awareness that today is unusual and there's something big you've got to do. So a lot of the time we wear clothes that are quite restrictive and uncomfortable. Clothing is a big source of comfort slash discomfort for me. So this is a really, really big one personally, because if I'm wearing clothes just day to day that I don't feel comfortable in, I find myself like breathing oddly and moving weirdly and just feeling a little bit of a heightened sense of anxiety. Whereas if I'm wearing clothes that are nice and soft and comfy and not too tight or restrictive, then I myself am just a nicer human being to be around. So this is probably my biggest one. My style has actually changed quite a bit over the last few years. I actually quite like a slightly smarter way of dressing a lot of the time. So therefore I found things like wide leg trousers that are super super comfortable, lovely knits that are really really soft and cosy and nice to wear. And basically all of my clothes 
I can do my job in because it just makes sense. Also think about whether you are likely to get hot or cold when you get nervous. I go cold, <laughs> really, really cold. Again, especially in my extremities, which includes my hands. It's really, really unhelpful. So for me, a really, really big one is wearing long sleeved layers. And so I have loads of thermal tops that are long sleeved because if I keep the blood that's running to my hands nice and warm, it's gonna really, really help with my symptoms, if you like. So find out what works for you because if you're somebody that gets super, super hot and flustered when you're nervous, then you might wanna go the other way. I mean still wear clothes. I think that's pretty applicable for almost all scenarios. <laughs> but maybe choose something that's light, that's breathable, and again, just something you can move really easily in. Now this next one, I nearly didn't put in because a lot of the time, this is actually something that for me can make my nerves worse. And it's breathing exercises, which is one of the number one things that people tell you to do. They're like, focus on your breathing, breathe in for this much, breathe out for this much. And for so long, I was like, this is terrible advice. I, my heart's racing. I feel a bit weird. I can't, <laughs> because I just completely tried to change my breathing pattern. So I have been on a bit of a journey with this. And I think I've cracked it. Initially, if you start doing some form of breath work, your senses will kind of heighten. And if you're in a situation where your adrenaline is already a little bit high, this can initially make it a bit worse. But if you keep going with it, and it won't take long, it'll just take a few seconds, you'll then start to feel your nervous system just start to calm slightly. And for me, mentally, my brain just kind of goes, Ugh. <laughs> it's a bit like, you know when you're having a head massage and your brain goes all fuzzy? Similar sensation. I've actually found that this can be really helpful, but not always. If I am in a situation of really, really high stress, so for example, if I'm doing an audition or it's a big solo in a concert, something like that, then I actually do not do this. This does not help me, it makes it worse. This only really works for me when I'm just a bit nervous and there's no real good reason for it. We all have those days where you're just kind of not feeling it, you're not feeling quite yourself, whatever, and you have to do something that normally you'd be like, okay, it's a little bit, you know, I have to buck up my ideas and pay attention, but this isn't something to be scared of. And it's in those situations that I find breath work super helpful. And of course, I've got to put this one in, and it's acting confidently. I spoke about this in one of my latest videos, so I'll have that linked up here, <laughs> up here for you. You know what? Every time I watch a YouTube video and they can't remember which side the link is, I'm like, ugh, come on, like, how long have you been doing this? You must know where it is. <laughs> Genuinely, every time. One of these, one of these corners, can't remember. But it's the good old, take it till you make it. And we can trick ourselves psychologically and physiologically by just acting like we know what we're doing. Because if you act like it, your brain will sort of go, oh, maybe, maybe we do, maybe we do know what we're doing. And also people will respond to you in a more positive way a lot of the time. Don't be arrogant about it, but if you're somebody that appears to be sort of calm, collected and confident, people like being around that. And therefore you'll find that the people you interact with are a little bit more relaxed because they're like, oh, it's fine, they've got this, they know what they're doing, we don't need to worry. And that will in turn help you. So it's a really, really useful tool. And I think a lot of people don't want to do it because they don't want to appear insincere or arrogant. And of course, that's totally, totally valid. But I guarantee you that you're gonna have to push this really far for those instances to happen. So just give yourself a little bit of a, you know, shoulders back, chest up, look up, look people in the eye, and you will just feel a bit more like, oh, okay, we got this. And now normally I would put one of the things that I think is the most important at the very end, but in this instance, I'm actually gonna put the one which I'm mentioning it because it exists. It is not something that I actually do. And that is of course, there is medication. <laughs> if you are somebody that is finding that you are being severely held back by performance anxiety, by nerves, and it's becoming a real problem, then please know that you can go to your doctor. <laughs> there is help available to you. I would always suggest that this is a last resort, but I didn't want to not mention it because it's the same with everything, right? So many people suffer unnecessarily when there is help available to them 
via their GP. So if you are somebody where you're like, I have literally tried everything, you have told me nothing new, I already I try and act confidently, I already do breath work and I'm doing all of the things, then <laughs> you're still finding that this is really holding you back, then please go and talk to somebody. There's no judgment around there. In fact, nobody needs to know if you don't want to tell them. So please know that there is actual medical help available to you if this is something that you are suffering with in a chronic way. Like I mentioned earlier, if you do want a little bit of help in how to walk into a situation when you're feeling super, super unsure about it, then watch this video. It will give you some really, really helpful, really practical tips and tricks that you can use to help you in those situations. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.